going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Wrestling Hour, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Sturchio, Josh Chernoff. We want to wish everybody a very happy Valentine's Day. I mean, Josh, you've dressed for the occasion. I've kind of I brought back the uh, the electric blue. Yeah, nice. Uh, Nothing says Valentine's Day like electric blue paisley. Uh, yeah, no, I actually am rocking a uh, a special tie here. It pays homage to every single. Bret Hart and or Owen Hart and or Hart Foundation logo. I do like that. I, Thank I, I you. have to give it credit where credit's due. Something you, you never because not Valentine's Day is all about hearts. But there's only one heart family in wrestling. There's that's also true. More than one royal family. <laughs> that's, that's also true. In wrestling. Uh, but yeah, so it is Valentine's Day. There is uh, listen the memories I have. In wrestling with Valentine's Day, I mean, look no further than St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Oh, man. I mean, what an incredible event that was. I that mean, was unbelievable. The debut of Paul White. Yes. Uh, at the cage match. You've seen it. I mean, if you're a wrestling fan, you've seen it. If not. If you haven't I, seen it, go watch it. Shame on you. All right? Go so, watch it. Go watch it. But yeah, we have ourselves a awesome, awesome, awesome uh, lineup tonight uh, because it is from, once again, the Chicago StarCast event. We've showed you the game event. We've showed you creating dynamite over the course of the last couple months. But this one was one of my favorites because, again, nothing says wrestling better than a stage show. A, well, that what? too. Yes, that too. I just. Yeah. But what I will say, something that, you know, when I'm at the gym, something that I have on the gym playlist is a lot of wrestling music, right? And wrestling music is really the the the, the heartbeat, no pun, uh, the heartbeat of professional wrestling. Nothing says a good wrestler like their theme songs. I'm talking like, I mean. Original Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Uh, no. T.L. Hopper. No. This is just what's on your list. No, no. These are what you. No, you know what's on dun, my list? Dun, 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 no, not at all, dun, actually. Dun, Please dun, don't dun, do that. That was a great theme song. It was actually a horrific theme song. But what I will say is some of the theme songs that dun, are dun, on my playlist at the gym. Time to play the game. No, better. no, that's no. Motorhead. Um, But no, I will say some of the best music going right now is produced, written, performed by our guy, Mikey Ruckus. Ah, yes. Mikey Ruckus and Dale Oliver. Yes. Who did some classic uh, TNA themes, including My World, Jeff Jarrett's My themes. My World. Yeah. 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 No, we love, love that one. We don't we don't get hit with copyright notifications on that one at all. <laughs> um, what are the words? Do you know the words? No. <laughs> That's, exactly That's what it what is, it, right? That is it. Um, but anyway... That's just one of the uh, many, many songs that this guy, these this duo, and perf- obviously they've just produced so many. TNA, AEW, yeah. Mikey Ruckus now is kind of, you know, picked up where where Dale Oliver left. I shouldn't say left off, like he's not making more music. Still but, doing his thing. But no, I mean, you know, the opportunity. Now I had the opportunity to sit down with them. On this stage, that's show. true. You did host this thing, and I, I, I will say, you know, look, I've had an illustrious career. Illustrious. Um, I've had incredible opportunities, all earned. But this was an opportunity that I absolutely jumped at when I was asked to host this. I jumped at it because, like you, I love wrestling music. Like everybody, I think wrestling music. You know, I referenced the the more the, there's there's more than one royal family. Cody Rhodes theme. Cody Rhodes theme. Whoa! Right? Exactly. Don't do it again, but exactly. Whoa! Cody Rhodes theme ugh, is that embodies who Cody is now. Fair. Right? Yeah. Uh, I jumped at this opportunity. And then when I found out the bonus. What was the bonus? Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Would be on stage performing some of his music. Well, that's just a home run. I mean, you got Dale Oliver. You got Mikey Ruckus. You got Jeff Hardy. You have a run-in from Jeff Jarrett. And hosted by me? Pff, I didn't get any better than that. It would have actually gotten way better if I hosted it. But in any event, you know how what? about you guys? I gotta go tell check you, this out. There's been a lot uh, lately. A lot of people have been writing in letters and people write letters postcards and, postcards and emails even. That's easiest. Uh, tweets. Whew. And they've been saying that they don't care for... Uh, how hurtful you've been towards me with some of the things you've oh, said. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I usually would call you a liar because that's typically what you do. But if, if... Case in point. If this is true, it is Valentine's Day, right? I do want to apologize. It's, you know, I, I would say that kindness 
is in the air. I don't mm. want to go any farther than that. Mm. I would say kindness is in the air. And if, if, if people are truly taken back a little bit in in not so good way of how I've treated you on the show, I just want to apologize to nobody. Um, that that's what we're gonna do. I mean, listen, what? I'm just I mean, I am who I am. I don't want to. I don't know how to dial it back. I'm all not right, about to right, start right, doing right, this Popeye, now. Right, calm down. Listen. <laughs> I accept your apology. I didn't give you one. Let's move but what on. I will give you is this stage show right, right here. Mikey Ruckus, take it away, my man. When I sit in on editing, you'll you'll apologize. He has nearly 1,000 themes between MMA and pro wrestling and has spent over four years now with AEW. Please welcome Mikey Ruckus. All right, Mikey Ruckus in the area, right there, we can see that. What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming. Mikey Ruckus is not the only one who's going to be joining us on here because we also have, he's a multi-time Grammy Award winner. He's a Nashville songwriter and has created over 700 themes for TNA. Please welcome Dale Oliver. All right, let's have a seat here. Nice to meet you too. I'm really excited to uh, have this opportunity to speak with you guys. This makes me really old. Old? Oh, because you have to like squat. I'm getting, all the yeah, way I'm getting down to that this. age. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I never know what to do either. Do I sit here? Here we go. We'll do the. Uh, yeah, we'll do oh, this. Man, I've here gotten here. really good at this as I've gotten older. I the little I'm leg kick. Here we go. You got to do it. I didn't. I didn't oh, used to do this. I can't do what Kevin Hart does with the full leg cross. No. That hurt, bro. <laughs> it comes from leaning over the guitar and a computer. Yes. A lot of it. You're, we developed the hunchback. You're by, yeah, you're just yes. you're this, right? You're just this, and then how does that work? We'll jump right into it. There. How does that work? Just the. The physicality of it, because when you're performing, you know, I'll see you performing on stage, you're moving, you're rocking around, but that's not what it's like when you're writing music. You're writing music, it's, I'd imagine, a very quiet, very calm and intimate setting at first. Is it calm for you? It depends. If the spark is a fire or just an idea. Because a lot of times, based off what you're saying, is if you're sitting there writing a theme, it can be a little mundane or whatever and and you know music's emotion so you're trying to get across an emotion for for a character or the talent you know that you're writing for whatever the situation so for me some i stand up put strap on be like i'm i'm rocking out sometimes because i play different and i feel different when i move into music it's just like a little baby dancing in the aisle at church you know it's that kind of so what's the what is it like for well i guess dad we'll start with you what is it like for you when your process you're standing up but nowadays with the computer that you're working on that is your computer up or you are know, you just standing up then you're sitting down then you're standing i'm, I'm jealous because my son's out here somewhere and he he's audio producer for uh aw and writes music and he's got one of those ones that goes up and down i do it old school Same. so okay. i'm kind of I'm like this guitar it's hanging here and I've got the deal and the monitor and so I'm like doing everything. Wow. I'm kinda like that. So I, it, cri it cripples you even more. Is all I'm <laughs> He's to say. doing the rock show stance in his office. Oh yeah. That's fantastic. I do the same thing. So Alone. first of all, it's it's never quiet for me. I'm always like beatboxing or or just yelling in key and my wife is telling me to knock it off and I'm shake you know, I'll be sitting in the chair and just like it's like a nervous tick. And that's usually how the themes start. And next thing you know, it's like, dun, 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 dun. I have to go outside or and just go sit in the car and yell and key in the car to kind of get it here. And then I go upstairs and get to work. And, and I, too, I've got a, uh, it's called an automated uh, desk. Mrs. Ruck has actually purchased that for me. I have, like, severe ADHD. And a lot of times it's more productive for me to work standing up. So I just hit a button. It raises up. And yeah, I've got everything nice. at chest level. And um, wow. 
And she's actually walked in while I've been rocking out and like filming me looking like an idiot. So, but you know, you'd have to imagine though, like the songs, and we're going to hear them a little bit later. We're going to hear some some a live performance of some of your songs. But with these themes that are meant to get an audience of, as we just saw with All In, 80,000 people at times on their feet and cheering, these are coming out of you. So the idea that you're rocking back and forth, yeah, that makes sense, right? That makes sense that you are, you are getting this, you're emoting this, this song out of you. For sure, yeah. You can go with that. You want to you <laughs> expound on that first? No, I, I, it, you know, it really for me, um, the themes that you know, the fans, I mean, they're the ones that dictate the talent, success in a way, you know, as talented as everybody is, and the theme song goes with it, and that kind of what makes it work for everybody, you know, all that together, and so we spend a lot of time trying to capture the character. I agree, and, and just to kind of piggyback on that, it's, it is more, for us, we look at the theme as being just part of the, the entire story, right? So you've got the talent, you've got the story that they're trying to tell, you've got the direction that the company wants to go yes. and the storyline that they want to use, and you figure out how you can capture that audibly, right? And uh, it's all, it, uh, there's a lot that goes into it other than just the beat itself. It's the time, it's the exposure, it's uh, something that's not overtly uh, over-suggestive, but enough to where it, it's catchy enough but that the first time you hear it, second time you hear it, you're already singing it. And a lot of times it's subliminal. You don't know that you know the song until you know the song. You know what I mean? So. One that stands out to me, one of yours, is uh, all about the boom. Great one. That's my uh, favorite theme song. It's, I was there the night that, uh, that Adam Cole debuted with AEW. And what I had to stop for a second and go, is this music, did he use this before? Because that crowd was instantly singing along with a song that they had heard for the very first time five seconds in at this Who's point. Who's that band? I want to, I want to buy that, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, so can you, I want to go over your catalogs, but we'll kind of start with there. Uh, we'll start with that one there. Uh, what was the process just for that specific song to get, to get that out there to that audience? Yeah, so... I got the text from Tony, which is usually what happens. Sometimes Tony will call me, sometimes he'll text me. Um, he, he said, hey, I need you to talk to Adam Cole. He's coming. And I was actually planning on being at All Out that week. So I was working on his track and Brian Danielson's at the same time. I was doing like a new rock version of Flight of the Valkyrie before we went to um, the one that he used, Born for Greatness. And the Valkyrie one ended up on the Symphony album. Uh, but that's a whole nother Oprah show. Uh, with, with Adam Cole, I knew that the boom spot was part of his, his persona when he was at NXT. And uh, I had heard the track that he had had. It was kind of like a... So I wanted to kind of elevate that because there was a swag in it, right? And uh, I wanted to build it to that point with the boom spot and everything. Uh, I put it together, and I just kept hearing. It's all, that's what it's all about. It's all about the boom. And... Uh, Hearing the riff that they had at NXT, I was like, this can be more like a heavy Rage Against the Machine type. And that's what Adam was saying, like, I love Rage, right? And uh, I put the first one together, and he absolutely loved it. And then the very next day, he, he texts me, and he's like, my mom loves this song. <laughs> and that's when I knew, that's, you know. So I told him, I said, like, hey, we need to get the boom spot in there, too. And he was like... I don't know if I'm ready to do the boom spot just yet, just because it's something from over there. And so he did the first couple of renditions you'll hear of it, um, it, there wasn't a boom spot. And then the community was like, hey, you need to have that in there. And he was like, Ruckus, you were right. Let's put the boom spot in there. I was like, I already got it done. So here you go. And um, the whole process was probably like three days before um, all out. So three, four days. So I knocked out the riff in a day. I tracked the vocals the next morning and then sent them up and did a couple of tweaks here and there and there we go. And, and I had no idea that it was going to take off the way it did. Uh, we hit number five on the Billboard Rock Charts uh, with That's that amazing. one. So, um, and I, I didn't realize it until like maybe six, eight months later 
and I, I got an email from Billboard that said, hey, you know, you guys charted. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so it was a nice little surprise. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Um, uh, let's go into the, the, the catalog right now. So maybe we'll go with a top five here. Uh, or if you just want to rattle them off, just some of the ones. What are some of the themes that the audience would be most familiar with that you've... Uh, You've done. Uh, there's Man, you know, over 700 or yeah, whatever, yeah, a thousand. The ones that I get uh, tagged in the most are uh, Keith Lee, um, Eddie Kingston, for sure. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Butcher and a Blade. Uh, all about the boom. Lucha Brothers. And that, of course, because of the, the performance at All Out, the same night that Adam Cole debuted. So. Ethan Page is good. Yeah, Ethan Page. And I... That whole performance and everything, like, that week was probably one of the craziest weeks of my life leading up to the debut of Adam Cole and his theme and then performing with the Lucha Brothers on the same show. And uh, it's pretty funny because I was sitting in the hard camp section. I left the hard camp section, went to go perform, and came back to the hard camp section, and everybody's like, was that the guy that was just the, was that, yeah, it's, that's him. Go talk to him. No, I don't want to talk to him. My friend said you should, he should come say hey. I was like, all right, hey. <laughs> Instant superstar. Um, how about you, Dale? What, what are some that, uh, from the, the TNA days or, or, or now, what are some songs that the fans are familiar with? And maybe they don't even know that you were behind. Yeah, I have a Cody Johnson song in country music. Uh, people that listen to that. <laughs> I know it's kind of diverse, uh, my career. But yeah, uh, wrestling-wise... Uh, you know, one of the first four that I ever did was the original AJ Styles and Jeff Jarrett theme. So those, I, I had a studio with a guy named Mark Miller that's the lead singer from Sawyer Brown. So we got in the studio business and had kind of a front of Mix Magazine, 1999, you know, and it was this great studio. It was, you know, state of the art then. And... Um, I had gotten off the road with uh, Blackhawk, was a band I was in, and a tour and with, uh, he knows them. <laughs> Some people remember, Reba McIntyre. I just finished a tour with Reba. My son was born, and I was like, okay, I'm not going on the road anymore. So I started writing, you know, different styles and ended up on uh, Shine Down's record, playing guitar and uh, on the Sound of Madness album. So just got How really... How wild is that? <clears throat> crazy, even for me. And uh, so I ended up getting into a lot of different things, you know, and uh, Mark Miller was friends with Jeff Jarrett. And uh, Jeff had sang one of Sawyer Brown's songs and, uh, uh, you know, one of the other shows. And um, anyway, they became friends. And he said, hey, he's starting a new company and they need some music. And I told him, you were the guy. Can you write some music? So I wrote you know, Jeff's and AJ's, and that was like first, first batch. And how many would you say through, I had here in my notes, um, <sighs> over 700 themes for TNA? At um, least. Which is... I have a thousand songs on television, movies, video games. Unbelievable. Uh, I've done EA Sports, Madden Football, a couple of movies, uh, scoring, and just... It's pretty diverse. That keeps me interested in it, that's for sure. So one thing for wrestling fans here, I know you did the, the theme music for this guy. I think he's got a future. Uh, they call him Sting. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you also do Stings in TNA? Okay, you mind if I just play it for you? Oh. <laughs> no, I'd like you to just sit quiet. Yes, please. If you can. <laughs> so, give me a hand, would you? Uh, it's so this one came about that way. Okay. It was last minute. I mean, he's already a giant star, and hey, Sting's coming in. We need music, and you're going like, you're not gonna. Uh, I guess we, we can't hey, afford Metallica. Same, same, same. I guess we can't afford Metallica, so it's up to you to beat Metallica. And I'm going. Thanks for having me. I'm gonna. So and that's a, so he had had this kind of slow. Uh, theme in WCW, but then that transferred over to him starting to use Seek and Destroy by Metallica uh, towards the end of his run in, in WCW. What I do think is really cool, 
while he gets ready for this, what I do think is really cool is that your theme almost harkens back to the pre-seek and destroy theme. Correct. Whereas as Dale's theme is almost kind of riding off that Metallica sound. So it's, yes. which of course I think also speaks to Sting, just in his ability to reinvent himself yeah. throughout the years. Well, you talk about a story career and different chapters within his story. And I think that's what we, I can say that we were both going for at that point. So we get the initial shock that we have to make the theme. And then uh, we figure out exactly what story needs to be told there. And, and Tony was very adamant with uh, the AEW rendition that we hearken back to the crow and uh, the crow sting. So that's kind of where I went with it. And I actually, crazy enough, I just met Sting for the first time. Um, really? I don't get out much. <laughs> I don't get out much. Um, it's kind of like, I'm like the, the scientist in Independence Day with the long white hair. When somebody shows up, he's like, yeah. Yeah, hey, let me show you what I got. So yeah, that's that's exactly how I've been for the last two days. I saw Sting in the in the green room, and I finally went over and said, "Hey, I just want to let you know, I saw you wrestle Ric Flair <laughs> the week before Clash of the Champions," and he was like, "Wow." <laughs> and did you go? Oh, and I also uh, wrote and recorded the yeah, music. Yeah, so I'm, I'm the, the, ring with I'm the music time. guy. That's I kind of throw that out. I'm the music guy. But uh, yeah, I, love, I had I love, to have the I mark out that. moment. You know, it's, everybody does. It's thing. Yeah. I love the the one you got for AEW right now. I mean, I, I, <laughs> all of them are, and are great. I really do. I mean, mine was, you know, you're talking about riffs and guitar riffs. So you're up against, you know, a hit song, hit band. You know, everybody knows who they are. So you go, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, so you you're going. Okay, I've got to write something that fits an original and kind of fits the stinger. So, I mean, how are you going to do all that? So, anyway, I did, and I could play. I can remember the riff. Let's hear it. Kinda. That was me. That, sorry. That's part of. That's the all theme. my fault. This is. What? Do you Metallica riff. Right. So it's kind of like a... Fantastic. Wow. That's about all I can remember of it. But that's, that's pretty good. Thank God I didn't have to play with I drums. I can't do that. I so, want to play like that. I, that's, I, that's old school chicken picking meets uh, Metallica. I don't know what you call it. But. So we talked a little bit about the, the, the deadlines in the sense that you guys would get a text or a phone call and, hey, we need this thing in two days. Um, I want to talk a little two bit hours. about... Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, the different production eras. Right between, oh, man. between TNA and AEW. And one thing you and I were talking about, I think it was yesterday, um, the ability to just, you know, hey, I have to do this, I'm working on this in my hotel room, or, you know, oh, yeah. and just how that has changed, the ability to bring these things with you and be able to create these themes uh, in a hotel room last minute. Um, can we kind of speak to the differences, maybe talk a little bit about how things have changed for each of you, from when you first started yeah, doing this, and I, I mean, when when you know it began for me with TNA was about March 2002. I started writing for the first show, which was I think in June, I think, and um, a lot of themes, a lot of different characters. You know, I, back then I would get not even photograph or anything, but I would get a drawing, maybe a, from their costumes or whatever character, whatever, which would help kind of create a direction. And, you know, I was in a studio, so we were using live drums, and I would, I would play main, mainly everything else and program things, and, and, uh, but I would record drums, you know, with the dr different players that, you know, are wonderfully talented that were involved. And, uh, you know, as things progressed with, with uh, technology, we were able to, you know, kind of pare it down and take it on the road, but at first, it, 
really wasn't available enough to fly and do it quickly. But as things went on for, um, you know, the show and it finally found some roots with people and everything, we were going down to Universal all the time. So we were doing pay-per-views in Nashville on Wednesday nights and then get on a chartered plane, get down to Orlando to do our first shows on uh, Fort Sports, Fox Sports Net, I think is what we were Right, doing. yeah, wow. So, yeah, we were starting to do that. So I had, to start, back. I had to start traveling. <laughs> and so I had to figure out all the, the, the modern technology, which was a little gimpy then, but it still worked pretty well. Uh, but, I mean, I would record toys. And I'm not going to tell you what themes there are, but I would record my son's toys sometimes and just manipulate them just to get different sounds because there wasn't a whole lot of libraries back then. I mean, you had you know, a few companies here and there, so you kind of had to make it up and make some of those sounds, you know, which was cool you know, to be able to do. Did you do uh, Samoa Joe's theme? I did. It's interesting. And did you do Samoa Joe's theme now? I did. Mine's called Nation of Violence. It's the first song I ever rapped. <laughs> and you can tell. But again, that's one that I think is, what's really cool about that is, is Joe has also had a, a kind of, no matter where he's gone, that he hasn't brought the same theme, but he's brought the same theme of the theme, right? right. The same style of theme. Because his start, the TNA version starts... <laughs> Yeah, and mine is dun, 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 dun. Everybody's like, you use Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> but they're brothers. And I was yeah. like, wait a minute, let me check that out. They're, that they're, does sound like Donkey Kong. <laughs> they're, they're kind of brothers. Whoops. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's, it's what's cool about it. It's kind of the evolution of... of Nation of violence. There you go. <laughs> It, so, but it is that evolution of the of the themes, and along with the evolution of your ability to record these themes. So, for you, Mikey, how long have you been doing uh, wrestling themes or MMA themes? So, I started in 2010, uh, just out of the need to supplement my income. Uh, you know, I had dabbled in music for a little bit uh, leading up to that, but I never did anything that garnered any sort of revenue or anything like that. And you know, I had just gotten out of my first marriage of 14 years, and I was starting over and trying to figure out my way, and I needed some, I needed some cash, man, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make music. And uh, at the time, uh, WWE, you know, had Jim Johnston locked in, and so I knew there was no path there. So I decided to, um, let me grab this, uh, here you go. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> started, no, it's all good. Um, I started to lean into the mixed martial arts industry. Uh, just because I was so I was so rooted in it and, and I was a huge fan of it at the time I was like I'm gonna start making themes for fighters and that'll give me a chance to kind of experiment with different genres uh, So I started networking on Facebook like hitting up amateur fighters and regional fighters and um, It just out of nowhere it started to kind of snowball and um, There was a lot of conversations that I, I would spend hours just talking to people like you're a salesman basically and for every 100 no's, if you got one yes, if you get one yes, you'll get another yes. Yeah. You, know, you just have to keep building on it, right? And uh, within the first year and a half, uh, I had my music debut in the UFC uh, for Carlo Prater, UFC 142. And uh, that's when I knew I was on the right path. So I continued to build that, started working for uh, independent organizations overseas. Uh, 2015, I would... T uh, team up with Zardonic, drum and bass metal DJ D Zardonic, and we created the theme for World Series of Fighting on uh, NBC Sports. That really kind of took things to another level, uh, level. And then things started to kind of, in the MMA market, started to dry up a little bit. Uh, so that's when I noticed that the independent scene in uh, professional wrestling was really kind of blowing up. And uh, talent were taking their brands into their own hands and utilizing social media to create the attraction feel of right. going from territory to territory. So I was like, I'm just gonna start all over again. And I'll be straight up. I was telling people, 50 bucks, I'll make you a theme. Wow. Whatever wow. you want. And what my goal was is to treat them like they were world champions, even if they were just starting out. 
and do everything I could to make sure they were happy because I knew that they were going to share that with people in the locker room. And my only goal at that point was just to create, to, to gain market share, basically. And b between 2015 and early 2019, I had created close to 300 themes for independent wrestlers in the US, UK, Germany. Uh, I started working with Revolution Pro Wrestling in the UK did a bunch of things for them, some other independent organizations, and then uh, AEW got announced. I saw it through Dustin Rhodes' tweet, and that's when I was like, this gig is mine. Now, keep in mind, I'm, I'm working in retail. I was running a Dollar Tree. I had 40 employees. I was working in my, my store 60 hours a week, sometimes more, and then I had a client list of themes. I would come home and have to go right into the office and work, and uh, almost got burnt out, like really close, almost gave it all up, and Mrs. Ruckus was like, you're out of your mind if you think you're going to quit. Sleep on it. So I slept on it, and you wake up the next day, you, just, you do what you do because you love it. You know? yeah. And then uh, that's when I heard about AEW, and uh, it was ninjas trying to, well, you're tracking down ninjas to try to network to get a hold of people. <laughs> and then just out of nowhere, uh, Matt Sells gives me a number and says, if you call this guy, he's got your contact. <laughs> And then he like disappeared in the wind. <laughs> so then I had my conversations with QT and then uh, a couple of conversations with Brandy. And next thing I know, uh, April of 2019, I was creating music for the, double, the first Double or Nothing. Wow. And never and that's, looked the back. that's the first one you did for yeah. AEW? I made probably 10 within the span of uh, last week of April leading up into uh, Double or Nothing. Matter of fact, the day of the first Double or Nothing... Matt Jackson called me, and I created the first Dark Order theme, the day of Double or Nothing. They were planning on debuting them that day, and then they got pushed back to the next uh, pay-per-view. Wow. Like wow. So we talked a second about, uh, earlier we talked about Jim Johnston, right? And you had also mentioned we were talking about Sting's theme, um, how you, know, you, didn't, you weren't able to get the rights in TNA uh, to play Metallica. Fast forward, uh, Tony Khan gets the rights to play Metallica <laughs> for Sting to Which come is out. Awesome. At, at, yeah, at All In. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about that, the, the because there has been this kind of uh, it, it's weird. There's been a resurgence of the original themes, uh, a huge resurgence of original themes. But at the same time, something that AEW has kind of become known for. Uh, whether it was Rob Van Dam coming out to Pantera, whether it was, you know, yeah. um, there have been there have been a lot lately. Um, Orange Cassidy's. Orange Cassidy changing his, you know. Ass boys and many men. Yeah, there's, look, there's there's uh, the a lot of those now. So, yeah, with uh, uh, Carry On My Way Where It Sounds. Yeah, there, there's a lot of that now. So do you, where do you feel like the industry is at this point when there is now a promotion that has no problem saying, yeah, I'll license that, that's fine. Um, how do you feel with that? Do you feel that that kind of helps to elevate the themes that you've done because now they are on the same level as that? Or what are your thoughts? Uh, for me, it's, it's so I, I look at it from all aspects, right? Um, first of all, let me say thank you to Tony Khan for being such a, a, a pro wrestling historian that he understands what those moments mean. Brian Danielson walking out to the final countdown. Mm. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because not everybody would do that. Some no. people may have the money and won't want to spend it. Some people may not understand that history. He understands the history. He understands the moment. And he has the, the funds to, to do that. And he's passing on his own moment when he yes. was watched it and he wants other people to feel that. I think that's yeah. great. And so there's, there's instances like that where it's absolutely needed. I also look at it from a financial, a financial aspect from what themes do today. So like back in the day, if you're creating themes in the earlier times, there wasn't really a push for uh, a revenue stream until they started selling them on CDs. Right. Hard sale copies are gone now, so everything is streaming or publishing. So I look at it from the financial aspect and how does that benefit or how does that um, create a challenge for the AEW music side of it. And at the end of the day, it's whatever the strategy calls for, right? It's, it's whatever the, uh, the story that Tony wants to convey in that moment. So I'm okay with 
either side. If it's an original theme, great. If it's a licensed theme, great. I can't wait. I, like, I want to see Juice Robinson under the lights with many men <laughs> doing his little... <sighs> That's the greatest, it'd be the greatest well, thing. It's like ever. I was saying a while ago, it, it, the, the talent kind of dictates how famous things are. You know, for us too, our themes. I mean, we could have something we love and it doesn't work out or the contract runs out and somebody leaves and that's the end of it. But, you know, that's what's kind of great about the, the, the guys that have been around for a while that are big talents and the, it's worth putting, worth putting, uh, it bit me. Now, it, uh, it's worth putting that type of investment into it, you know, for the fans and everybody. I mean, it's, it's exciting to watch. Yeah, for sure. And at the same time, I'm just like, uh, let's make sure we don't go on a shopping spree. Because yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I look at the financials on the side of it, and I'm just kind of like, <gasps> and it's not even my money. Like, I don't like spending other people's money, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know. And it, it, it creates this thing where this person gets one, this person gets one, so now everybody wants one. So you, right. have, to, you have to know Right. When the right time is to pull the trigger on that. So, so I mean, Wembley was a good one for Sting. I mean, that was just awesome. Oh, exactly, awesome. right? Because oh, yeah. it, it harkens back to that time. Um, but I think what's really neat about it is, you know, Tony Khan's appreciation for the history of wrestling, as you mentioned before, he does know when it's time to, like, the final countdown and stuff like that, to bring that back. But at the same time, with these original themes, much like everything that you did with TNA, You've created your own. You've created these things that 10, 20 years from now, these themes you've created are the ones that people that are gonna people are gonna go. Oh, that's the one I want. Like, like, uh -oh. like for uh -oh. instance. <laughs> What's going on, dude? That's my cue. Out of every panel and since day one of first Starcast, I did Jim Johnston's, but this panel when it was announced, and Karen just goes, Jeff, we gotta go to work. I said, I gotta run in there real quick. And I'm going to tell the world, he knows how much I think of him. I'll get emotional. Um, this man right here created more magic. You guys got to hear a little bit of it or a lot of it, but you have no idea how appreciative I am of Dale, uh, what a great friend he's been through the years, uh, super talented. And Mikey, we're just getting to know each other and work together. He yeah. did something real quick uh, in Wembley. That's for my podcast story <laughs> that we'll get into. But Dale, I want to say it publicly. I love your brother. Thank you. But um, this shirt right here, My World Podcast, but literally my world revolves around his creation. Wow. So I, I, I'll just... I cannot thank him enough for everything. Beautiful. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, this incredible stage show from StarCast 6. Again, it is just loaded with just fantastic theme songs, stories of how they even came up with the theme songs, the, the alterations great. they I made. Am great. Like what? as a host, no. Think about it. Like what? as like I know <laughs> when I'm up here and it's the two of us. It's one of those things where you're just like comparatively, you can always tell how good I am. But just to see me hosting on my own, <laughs> wow. You know, it's 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 not often that I'm speechless. But uh, well, I'm not speechless now either. I'm just really impressed with myself. And thank you for pointing that out. I don't recall pointing that out. I recall pointing out that Mikey Ruckus was doing a fantastic job. Hey, you know what else he's doing a fantastic job with? Mm, what? Be kind and rewind. Yes. Mikey Ruckus has a show available on watchonpremiere.com and, of course, our YouTube channel. Every week, Mikey Ruckus will get together with various celebrities, various people of note in John Alba and... There, uh, I, rumor is that I might be on one of those. I doubt it, but I, there is no rumor to the fact that, sh that uh, Mikey had Rebel on, and Rebel is a former Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. Yeah, and then she was just like, oh, God, i got to get away from this team. I'd oh, like come to, on. I'd like to cheer someone who'd actually win. Uh, Listen, enjoy the rest of this one right after this commercial break. You have a beard, huh? I'm not buying it until you buy it. Mad Cat Beard Care. I like this hat. 
I also like this beard care. That's why I'm teaming up with Mad Cat Beard Care. It's one of my favorite products and smells. A portion of the proceeds go back to save and rescue cats, which is pretty amazing. Enjoy the products. They are absolutely amazing. This premium beard oil, baby. Oh, yeah, you can only get it from where? MadCatBeardCare.com to buy you some of the most delicious smelling beard products in the world. Delicious! Delicious! Frisco! Delicious. 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 You heard it? It's delicious! delicious. Frisco Barbers! For real, I use this stuff every day. It's fantastic. I put it in my hair, too, guys. You want a beautiful, perfect beard like the Indie God? Pick up some Indie God beard care right now from Mad Cat. wrestlers who maybe will bring themes from the past, um, the new themes you're creating, but sometimes you'll have a professional wrestler who can actually perform their own theme music, uh, like a gentleman that I'd like to introduce to the stage right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Hardy. Well, Jeff Hardy, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Can we get that uh, microphone? Thanks for having me. There he is. <laughs> Thanks for having me. There we go. So, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your history with music? Um, I think, originally, I think people first knew you as more of a, a physical artist in the sense of, you know, painting and, and whatnot. Uh, and then we've seen just incredible things you've done, even like on the lawn and stuff, you know. You're just an artist through and through, um, even what you do in the ring, right? And then there's the music side as well. And I think TNA was, all right. I think- uh, I'll take the blame. <laughs> I, I think TNA was maybe the first time, at least I can remember that we really had that opportunity to hear some of your music on a, on a larger stage. Um, can you tell us about kind of how, how that all came about? Yeah, for sure. I really got into writing songs. God, somewhere around 2002, I want to say, when I met my guys from Ohio. We started the band called Peroxygen. And, but then I, when I went to uh, TNA for the first time, I met Dale, and I wrote this song called Modest. And I was like, modest to the top, you know. And, it was, and I, somebody said that just earlier. They said, man, you just bring that back. That was a great interest theme. And it, it was, but that was kind of the beginning of mine and Dale's relationship when it comes to music. Yeah, we met at the asylum in Nashville on the bed of uh, Jeff Jarrett's pickup truck, I think. And you were showing me songs and we were listening to the music. <laughs> I mean, it was funny, but yeah, I think it was 2004. And this is how far we go back, back in the day, because I'm very, I'm not educated when it comes to like technology and all that, but I would do my vocals on CDs and send them to Dale. And he would and load the, the vocal, it was crazy and, for the longest time. It, it wasn't time. quite the technology they have today, but just like Mikey was talking about the mashups, that was be kind of, Jeff would be singing to a tempo or something that he had done with his keyboard, and then I would take that and time it out figure out the BPM, and then build a track around... I call it surgery. <laughs> it was definitely surgery. <laughs> but that's that was it. creative. But, and, and that's incredible because, like Jeff, as you just mentioned, you'll have fans who'll say, oh, you got to bring that back. This is something that you recorded, sent a CD over, and then you put it together, and it is now a part of somebody's history. It's, it's something that it, it brings an emotion out of them when they hear it. And I think that that's music in general. I think everyone can agree nothing can uh, bring back a, a, a feeling of nostalgia quite like hearing a song. And it's exactly the same way in pro wrestling. I think that's, that's an incredible thing. Um, the two of you, so, so what else have you done like as far as collaborating or is it? Yeah, I was just at Dale's house a few weeks ago and I wrote this song. It's called Abnormal Day and it's, it's from me, kind of my spirituality side of this human life. But uh, what inspired the song is when Jay Briscoe got, got killed in that accident and his two daughters survived. And, I'd wrote a song to it years ago, like in, 20, in 2012, 
Uh, but then I went back through and I was rewriting lyrics because I've, I've evolved as a writer, as a singer, all together artist. Um, but yeah, it just kind of came to me. We just recorded that. And another one called uh, O2-23-2023, which was a scary day of my life. It was my last uh, a court date for a conviction uh, for me getting myself into a terrible mess. So naturally, I've always kind of, like all my, my songs are kind of journal entries. So yeah, I was just there. And we got a, a new project that's coming out. Uh, and there's a song called Savable. It's just so much is going on. It's just, there's so much going on. I don't think there's anything out there like it. And I kind of understand why, but... Uh, and then there's another one called Manifestations on this project that uh, myself and Darby Allen's crew might help me with a music video to. So I'm super Zane, excited about that. Zane's running right somewhere. And Zane, yeah, Dale's son. I mean, and I've known him Six since. Years. Shout out, oh. Dale, uh, Zane Oliver. Zane Oliver. Amen. Yeah, yeah, brother. Yep. But yeah, that's that's. A, I mean, Jeff writes incredible lyrics. It comes from his life, you know, and he's honest about it, and it helps other people because none of us are perfect. I mean. You write some great stuff. Yeah, and where I was getting to with that, after Modest, the next, the next song was Another Me. It was the first time I've ever turned heel in pro wrestling. And this song called Another Me uh, was the one that followed up Modest. But we went on, I just had this, I was like, why don't we like, see if we can do like six new songs in six years. And I'm pretty sure we did it. Like at our big pay-per-view, Bound for Glory. It was a new song every year, and I was just so grateful they, they let us do that. But speaking of Another Me, I'm playing my biggest gig ever in a few weeks. It's called the uh, Blue Ridge Rock Festival with all these crazy big name bands. And, uh, and I got booked on it with me and my Carolina guitar buddy that we do, do an acoustic show. And uh, super excited, but that's what it's about, right? Just getting out there and taking that risk and trying not to be afraid, but just facing fear and, and getting through it. So everything's kind of evolved uh, throughout my life. And music is uh, spirituality to me. And I've, I've always, I think, the, yeah, my, my, my outlook on it is like, it's always been between my soul and my, my human self. So between self and soul, I think, is where all my songs come from. You mentioned that, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say it's been my escape and therapy as well. You mentioned the project that the two of you were working on. Do you have any more details uh, as to when you think maybe people have an opportunity to hear it? We're almost done. I've got to finish up a couple of mixes, and we're probably this fall for sure. Yeah, for sure. And the idea, if, if we can get this video done, man, I think it's going to be the best video. I've only done like three or four maybe music videos, but this will definitely be the, the best one yet because I've always loved Darby's videos that he does, like the black and white stuff and the stuff with him and Sting and the face paint. Naturally, I love the face paint. So I just had a feeling with this song called Manifestations. It's another dark kind of song, but uh, man, it'd be cool to have like a Darby Allen vibe on this thing. And with my, I read up the whole the script, so I'm, I'm super excited to like bring that into reality but yeah it's it's soon hopefully uh, before 2024 i imagine we sang savable the song he mentioned a minute ago and started most of the vocals hotel room in las vegas about a year and a little over a year and a half ago i think wow well yeah i'm excited for that i think everybody is uh is waiting so we'll stay tuned i'm sure uh you'll let everybody know when that's coming out <laughs> um but you know what i think what everybody would really like is to maybe hear some live music what do you think? Is we can do that. Hey, all right. We just so happen to have a guitar over there and <laughs> some a couple. equipment. So yeah, we're off the cuff, just randomly going to do this. Uh, so yeah, let's do some live music. What are we? Uh, what are we? What are we thinking of doing, doing here? Yeah, this we'll is super. Guitars going here. Super interesting. We were. At, it was after a TNA Impact show at the Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, and me and Dale were walking back from the spot we would always eat at after the shows. And I said, I don't know why, man, but I just want to write a song called obsolete i just like the word and uh and I, i'm pretty sure deep down it came from a place when uh i got back through my first uh, big trouble with the law from addiction and uh, i i came out of that and was in great shape again and but i had this feeling like you know our career started in, in the wwe and i had this feeling was like man i'm never going to be good enough uh, to go back to wwe ever to like you know, be a WWE superstar again. And I just had that stuck in my head, like that's never gonna happen. And I think that's where I'll fade away and classify myself as obsolete uh, came from. But um, just the way life works out, I mean, again, that just came out of me from a kind of a depress depression stage of life going, oh my God, I'm not good enough to ever go back to WWE. But sure enough, in 2017, we made a huge return to WWE and, and had a few good years. 
And, you know, life happens, stuff happens. Um, but, yeah, the, the song Obsolete turned out to be, I think, my, it's probably my, my most known song uh, that's out there uh, in the music universe. Um, but, yeah, sure enough, I wrote those lyrics, and uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. And I haven't done it, you know, I've, I've been doing it acoustically. I haven't done it, like, full band style since, uh, you know, pre-pandemic. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to do a little Obsolete for y'all, if that's all right. Now let's do it. Set in my ways, I am changing Every single move you're making Sense of analyzed predictions Far beyond our comprehension I've been tortured with arriving The thoughts that stop a star from shining Kill me now before I'm sober so I die before it's over My skin's dying because you're under it Oh, I'm done lying to myself for this For all the wondering, believing, man, it's making me weak I'll fade away and classify myself as obsolete Set in my stone, I am changing Every sudden move you're making The sense of traumatized inflictions That intensify this tension I've been tortured with denying Walks on water, seal my blinding Faith is stronger when I'm sober I'll survive until it's over My skin's dying because you're under it Oh, I'm done lying to myself for this For all the wondering, believing, man, it's making me weak I'll fade away and classify myself as obsolete 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 Set in form of separation Pleading for cooperation From the higher powers out there Save me from this daily despair Undone I am reassessing Common bonds that are reflecting Higher powers waiting out there Save me from this daily despair my skin's dying because you're under it Oh, I'm done lying to myself for this For all the wondering, believing, man, it's making me weak I'll fade away and classify myself as obsolete My skin's dying because you're under it Oh, I'm done lying to myself for this for all the wonder and believing, man, it's making me weak. I'll fade away and classify myself as obsolete. 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 I am completely insane to try. Oh my God, I'm completely insane. I didn't even think about how hard that is without the drums and just not really. Oh my God. That was incredible. Thank you. Well, we hope you enjoyed the stage show. Like I said, it was in a fantastic time to be there live to witness a it all. Duet. Jeff Hardy. A duet between me and Jeff Hardy. That's what would have made it better. Oh my God. You have a singing voice? You, you can sing? Of course I can sing. Really? I have a voice of an angel. Nah. Did you not hear the first couple of bars of uh, Auld Lang Syne that I broke out on our show? No, we cut that out. 
Um, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Uh, whoa, whoa. Wait. Damn. Wait, what? hold on. What? What? We were about to end the show. What? We didn't throw it to Tommy D. What are you smiling about? Did you? So. <laughs> no. No, Come and on. then you noticed it wasn't on the. It wasn't on the run sheet. It wasn't on my notes. Tommy D and I have, you know, you mentioned before kindness is in the air. Sure. It's Valentine's Day. So I gave Tommy D the week off for Valentine's Day. So, because he's, now you're thinking to yourself, you're thinking to yourself, why did I have to give him the week off for Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day was yesterday. He could be here working today. Right. Because I knew that that's how long Tommy D needed to, you know, to muster up the courage. Oh, my God. <laughs> to ask somebody on a date. He's married. That's why he was so nervous. Can't have his wife find out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tommy. I'm So Tommy D's not with us this week. I'm sorry, man. Just I an empty control an room. Empty control room over there. I mean the lights are out. It, Tommy D's not here. You finally got your way. Yep. So with that, thank you for joining us here on the wrestling hour. My name's Josh Chernoff. That's Dave Sturch. EO. Oh, well, I'm glad you enunciated it right. But anyway, I, again, great show, great lineup. Mikey Ruckus, find him right here on Premiere. Find that entire stage show. Hey, before we go, oh, no, if this is another announcement, I'm going to lose my mind. I have a massive announcement <laughs> to make. Like, come on. You're bringing Tommy D back for the next week's episode? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I might actually extend his, uh, oh, man. his vacation. You know, I'm real time right now. I'm getting messages from people who haven't even watched it yet, but just heard it through the grapevine, uh, how much they've enjoyed this episode without Tommy D. Mm. Guess we'll have to, uh, you're, you're just a, not a nice person. I mean, it's you say Valentine's say, Day. You I mean, say it's, it's Valentine's Day. I don't need to be nice to you. I already bought my box of chocolates. I ate them. I left one or two for my wife. Your box of chocolates? God, you're so from Philadelphia. Anyway, what? What's your I major? Box of chocolates. What? How is that from Philadelphia? Box of chocolates. Yeah, no, I heard you, dude. I oh, heard what you should twice. I do instead? What? What? What should I? Should I be from Jersey, but wish I was from Texas? Is that what I need to be? <laughs> is that a, that's a jab at me. Yeah, uh, that's absolutely a jab at you. Why I'm from I Jersey. Say? I'm from Jersey. I love Jersey. I love Jersey. Oh, the Cowboys. Oh my Cowboys. Oh, we're done. We're done. I love we're done. Texas. Cowboys stuff. Texas. I love Texas. I love Texas so much that I'm wearing I'm wearing my blue on Valentine's <laughs> Day. Oh man. So anyway, do you have an announcement or can we leave? Big things are coming in the world of professional wrestling, in the world of premier oh, yeah? wrestling. Do tell. Well, I can't tell that much just yet, but some of you may have noticed there have been some changes lately. Okay. Some changes with the website, mm -hmm. some changes with the app. Sure. These are not uh these are these are not an accident. Oh. Some big changes are happening. I'm and excited. you know all about these. I do. And uh in the coming weeks we're gonna share more and more about it. But uh dare I say Premier, Premier Wrestling, gonna change the landscape of the wrestling business. And that is not hyperbole. I'm excited. Are you excited at home? Please Should be it. sure to tell us how excited you are. Follow us on all the social medias. Like this video. Share the video. Tell your friends about the Wrestling Hour, one of the funniest and most entertaining shows that you'll watch out there in the world. I of hear that all the time. Wrestling. I've actually never made a joke once on this show. Oh, I'm I don't understand why this is considered funny, but yeah. it is. To look at. You're funny to look at. Happy Valentine's Day, Josh. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for the Wrestling Hour. See you guys next week.